So I asked you guys, what builds would you like to see outside of the standard meta stuff? Your wells, your banners, etc. And a common answer I got was, what about Strand Warlock? Now, I've normally not been a huge fan of Strand Warlock, not because it's bad or anything. In fact, some Needlestorm builds are actually pretty good for certain situations in the game. But I've never had the itch to try it out because of how good the counterparts were. But I thought, you know, Warlocks have basically at least one great build on every affinity. You got Well Warlock, Vesper, Arc Warlock, Devour, Void Warlock, Stasis Turret Warlock. So why not try to make a Strand build work? At the same time, we also got a new Strand Wayframe GL, Tusk of the Boar, from Iron Banner. So I thought it was a good idea or a good opportunity to try out a, a little two-for-one special, if you will. Now, I gotta say, the results were actually pretty positive, so I was a little bit surprised. But anyway, Onslaught was the perfect playground to test this out. So while that plays in the background, let's get into the build. So here's the subclass screen. I did pick things based on what I was fighting in Onslaught, so it's a little dictated from that. So you could change it up if you'd like overall for other stuff in the game. But in here, I have ability-wise, Healing Rift, Burst Glide, and then Shackle Grenade, because Onslaught has champions, and it's just a good neutral game play to pick Shackle. But you could put Throttling Grenade here if you'd like. In Aspects, we have Weaver's Call. So when you Rift, you just make Threadlings. Pretty simple, straightforward. And then Mind Spun Invocation. I always butcher that name. So here, you just get enhanced abilities depending on what grenade you picked. If you picked Shackle Grenade, then you can eat your grenade and then have a suspending effect when you're fighting enemies. And then if you have a Threadling Grenade, then you can eat that and then generate live Perch Threadlings. For Fragments, going from left to right, we have Thread of Rebirth. A Strand Weapon Final Blow has a chance to create a Threadling. We'll get to that in a second with the Weapon Showcase, the main focus of this build. In the second slot for Fragments, we have Thread of Generation. Dealing damage generates grenade energy. Pretty simple. Number three is Thread of Evolution. Threadlings travel farther and deal additional damage. We want our Threadlings to do more damage. And number four, Thread of Warding. Picking up an Orb grants Woven Mail, which we will be doing very easily with this build. And in case you're new and don't know what Woven Mail is, it is basically extra damage resist on top of all the resists you already have on, so it's just more survivability. Now let's talk about the start of the show, the weapon that's going to synergize with the entire build, that is Tusk of the Boar. So for my role here, I went with Slideways, which is Walmart brand slide shot. You just shoot, slide, get a new bullet, and then shoot again, but there's a small cooldown after you've done it once. But, there's a fun fact, you can shoot that second bullet and then switch weapons, swap back to Tusk of the Boar, and then now you can slide again without having to wait for the cooldown. So we're just using this as a reload machine. And the second perk, normally this is where Chain Reaction would go on any other class, Hunter or Titan, but for Warlocks, I wanted to test out Hatchling because our build is just surrounded with doing Threadlings and activating Hatchling. So Hatchling, for those of you that don't know, is pretty bad normally, at least on the other two classes, but it says... Position final blows, or rapidly defeating targets with this weapon, spawns a Threadling at the target's location. So given that Tusk of the Boar is going to be getting multi-kills everywhere all the time, we can have a chance to spawn even more Threadlings, which will be doing more damage thanks to the fragments you just talked about, so it just synergizes very well. The other two weapons are completely flex choices for this build. You could do whatever you want. Me, personally, the other slot in the energy would go to some sort of primary weapon in terms of champion stunning, or maybe like Indebted Kindness if you want to go the double special route. In your heavy slot, normally I would say for waves, go with a machine gun because they're just really effective against trash mobs when you have tons of waves going at you. But this build already covers all of that between Tusk of the Boar, the Threadlings, and whatever primary you want to use, maybe like Sunshot. So in the heavy slot, I feel like I would recommend something like a bipod rocket launcher or anything that can do good DPS damage to bosses or maybe a Tormentor that spawns in or uh, the uh, Sky Bombers, whatever other yellow bars that you can encounter. So think rockets, linears, grenade launchers, things of that caliber. As for the exotic armor piece in this build, we're going with Swarmers. It says, destroying a tangle spawns a Threadling. Also, additionally, your Threadlings unravel targets, but that's not the main point of this. So the idea here is going to be when you're using Tusk of the Boar and you're killing tons of trash mobs together that are in an enclosed space, it's going to travel on the ground thanks to it being a waveframe. It'll destroy the enemies, make a tangle, and then also at the same time make the tangle explode as the basically AoE travels on the ground, and then it'll spawn a Threadling to kill anything else that may have survived in the area. So just like damage on top of damage on top of damage, if that makes sense. Additionally, I do want to note that in the artifact, there are two perks that you can pick out to help your build. That is Unraveling Orbs. Picking up an orb grants strand weapon to Unraveling Round. And then Horde Shuttle, damaging unraveled targets with a weapon, occasionally spawns a Threadling. So there's another source of spawning a Threadling. Essentially, the goal is just to summon as many bugs as humanly possible while abusing your abilities and Tusk of the Boar. Finally, let's go over the mods, starting from top to bottom, going at Helmet first. We have three mods 
Two of these are going to be Harmonic Siphon, just to make orbs when we're using Tusk of the Boar, which is going to be the primary weapon that we're using. Then we have Dynamo as the last copy here, just to reduce our super cooldown, because Needle Storm is still a very good super overall. For our gloves, we have three mods. Number one is Heavy Handed. Your power melee final blows give you an orb of power, and also, using your melee, you can potentially create a tangle. Number two is Momentum Transfer. Causing damage with a grenade reduces your melee cooldown. Pretty straightforward. And number three is Fastball. However, if you're not using a four-star mod in your gloves, you could potentially replace this with, like, a, a loader mod for your weapon. For your chest, if you've watched any of my build videos recently, you know the answer. It's always Resist. Void Resist, Solar Resist, and Arc Resist. Having another chest piece for reserves if you'd like, put resists on your main one. For our swarmers and our legs, we have three copies of Strand Weapon Surge because we want to pump that Tusk of the Boar as much as possible. And if you're going into a boss phase, you could always change this to whatever affinity your heavy weapon is. So like if you're rocking an Apex Predator, you can just change these to Solar in that boss fight. And finally, in the class item, we have three mods. Number one is Bomber, reduce your grenade cooldown when using your class ability, so your Rift. Then, Powerful Attraction, when you do use your Rift, you will pick up orbs that are near you on the ground instead of running after them from your Threadlings and such. And in the last slot, we have Distribution, just reduce all ability cooldowns when using your class ability near targets, which will happen all the time because you want to Threadling those targets. With that said, here's my final thoughts on this build and Hatchling slash Threadlings in general. Warlocks, I think you're doing great with this build. It works very well in ad-based content, you know, like maybe Horde mode or, I guess, Defense in Onslaught's case, or ad density, let's say, like in a GM like Devil's Lair, where there's just a ton of enemies in the room, or maybe Lost Sectors, where there's a ton of enemies and a couple of champions you can plow through. That works fine as well. I wouldn't really run this in any place that doesn't have a ton of enemies coming at you at all times. And uh, as far as Threadling and Hatchling goes, I think on Warlock, you can make this work really well with uh, Tusk having Hatchling and everything else with the abilities and Swarmers and all that. But I will say on Titan and Hunter, it feels really underwhelming to try to utilize those aspects of Strand. And I think they're probably going to get a buff eventually. I, I don't know. I'm not, a I'm not a genie or have a crystal ball to see. But I think eventually Bungie will buff those. And then maybe you can try to use these kind of uh, tactics on Titan and Hunter. But let's be honest. Titans, unless Banner gets nerfed, they're probably just going to be on Banner for the rest of Eternity. And uh, Hunters have Beyblades. You know, stay tuned for that. Alright, that's it. I'm done yapping. Hopefully you enjoyed this or enjoy the build. If you do, please consider subscribing today. It does help the channel grow and is much appreciated. And I'll have the dim link for this build down in the description below as well, along with all my socials. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can leave a like and or comment below. If you don't know what to comment, here's a question for you. What build do you want to see in the future outside of typical meta stuff? And with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.